Hi, this is Nancy L.T. Hamilton with another video. Yes, I do have pink hair. For those of you who have watched me before, it's going to be purple, I hope, next time. Anywho, speaking of color, we're going to be coloring metal today. I have one patina video, which we'll have a link for. But this one is different kinds of surface treatment. I'm going to be using um, acrylic paint, alcohol inks, uh, heat, um, oil, and flux. So we're going to have a really good time. See you in a minute. So now we're going to start with some color and um, we're going to do some colored pencils. What you need is metal. I'm going to use this copper. and I like the pattern metal because like you can see here the color tends to stay inside the little patterns and then I kind of wipe it off and makes a really pretty cool effect but you can you don't have to wipe it off either you can just color the entire thing and one of the important things that I think is important is to put a tooth on this without taking off the pattern so this is a probably a 220 you could use 220 320 something like that but you want to get it so so that there's a good tooth on here you can go cross hatching too that'll have more teeth to hold on to stuff with so once I get this all sanded, then I'm going to apply the gesso. I'm going to wipe this off on my apron. That's what they're for, right? And a little paintbrush. This is gesso. Use it to prime canvases to put paint on and other things like priming metal. So I'm just going to put probably two coats on. I'm going to put this on, and then we're going to let this dry and come back to it. I'm going to put the other coat on so you don't, you don't really need to watch me paint gesso. And you can also pattern with the gesso too. You can stipple it and make all different patterns for the pencil to adhere to. So it's not just, you know, trying to get it smooth sometimes. Sometimes you want it real textural. You can use a palette knife or things like that. So I'm going to paint away and I'll see you in a minute. So I've got my piece gessoed and I used my handy dandy. 300 year old Vidana Sassoon hair dryer to speed things up. Um, I divided the, pat, the metal in half. I'm going to do dark colors first on one side and light colors first on the other just to give you an idea on how it looks. And I also like to use colors that are on opposite sides of the wheel, but you could do subtle grays and beiges if you want. You know, there's no hard and fast on this. So I'm just going to kind of like when you're you know, using colored pencil. <laughs> you can go ahead and put your color in. You can come in and cross hatch it. This if you want. Remember these are waxy. Um, what I like to do, when I remember when I said wipe it off, well I use a little alcohol on uh, some paper towel or cotton swab and it kind of smears it around a little bit which is pretty cool too. So um, I'm going to start with the light color on this side. I think I'll go to white, sorry, or flesh, white people flesh anyway. So we're just going to come back and I'll show you how things develop. Oops, a little too hard there. Took some of the gesso off. So I'm going to do this for a few minutes and we'll visit in two, three, one, zero. So here we have the... Um, this side I started with the dark colors first and this side I started with the light colors and just pinks and yellows and purples and a little turquoise and you, you can do whatever you want. Um, I put a little rubbing alcohol on here and you can go ahead and do things like this where you rub off some of the areas which I really like because it's like a soft blended look. Um, another thing that I've played with before is I've stuck these in the toaster oven at like 250 or something because they're wax based pencils so if you put them in the toaster oven they get soft and then you can rub them and smear them a little bit and that's what I did with this is the the color got soft and went into the um, grooves on the pattern so um, this needs to be finished pretty much every single thing we're going to be doing today minus one is going to need to be minus one I think um, we need some kind of finish on it to protect it or some kind of setting where it's buried deep inside where it won't get rubbed off. So um, on to the next. So 
Now we're moving on to alcohol inks. Uh, once again, this will need to be sealed at the end and also uh, put a little tooth on it. You don't have to put as deep a tooth as you would with the paint products, um, but this is pretty fun to play with. I, I usually use two jars of alcohol, one to, to do the primary rinse on my brush and the second to do the secondary rinse. Keep it down. So uh, also you can use it to thin. Mine kind of, it dries really fast. So you can paint it on just like this. And then you can um, drop color on it or you can overlay colors because these are translucent which makes them pretty cool. Where's that color I had? I'm going to do a little toy coolies. So you can run it down into the grooves or whatever. Add a little shadowing on there. I'm going to pick up some more of the color. It almost looks black on here. And so the darker ones will fill in. This is pattern metal too. So you can just play with your colors. Just remember that every time you put on a color, it, it they tend to run together because the alcohol kind of melts the colors. Um, but it's a really wet, fun way to color your metal. It's it's not scratch proof, but the sealer helps a lot. So we're going to move on because we have a lot to talk about today. And you know how much I talk. So another way to color metal is to use nail polish. Um, it's really fun to do. It's kind of like doing your nails, but you don't have to worry about petting the cat when they're wet. I usually, you know, just like you do your nails. I mean, you guys probably have seen this happen if you don't wear it yourself. Um, you just put on a couple of coats. I would put like three until you get that intensity of color. And then just let it dry and put a clear coat on it. Um, you do want to protect this in some kind of like bezel setting or recessed somehow in your in your work um, or you could do it as pendant or earrings but if you're doing any kind of rings or bracelets on any of these you need to make sure that they don't get scratched or rubbed off so I'm not going to paint this whole thing because you probably get the idea of fingernails so we're going to move on again to the next project so next colorant is acrylic paint um, I'm looking for something. Oh, there it is. They also make this really pretty pearlescent liquid acrylic. It's really shiny and it's thin, so it's fun because you can kind of put a glaze on stuff. There's two things you can do with acrylic paint. One is you can um, just use the paint itself and maybe some of this on it for sparkle. Um, the other thing is you can use this fabulous product called Chroma Crackle. And um, if I was together, I would have the example. We'll put a little image of some of the examples of pieces I've done with this. But this is really fun, and we use the heat gun with it. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm thinking in my head I'm going to use the Chroma Crackle. I'm going to show you how to use this because most of you have probably played with acrylics before, just plain, but not with this maybe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a base coat on my metal of this Mars Black here and paint that on and I'm probably going to rub off most of it and leave the uh, dark areas in the recesses. Maybe I'm going to do half and half so I can show you how it looks. So I'll rub off half. And remember any texture that you leave on the metal will show up um, on your finished product but you can sand this down with maybe six eight hundred thousand grit paper to take off any um, lumps similar with you can do the same thing when when using the gesso too so uh, we're going to dry this and uh, get back to you in a minute so chroma with a k crackle with a c we're going to paint the chroma crackle onto i added pink while you weren't looking and kind of dabbed this with paper towel just to see how the different how it looks so i'm going to put a healthy load of heck i'm just going to town of the chroma on here that may have been too much but maybe not and i'm going to paint it all over i think i did too much i'll just wipe it on rebecca's skirt <laughs> Okay, the only reason I have the cardboard here is so I don't get this all over my charcoal. Okay, and you know what? Where? Oh, I know. I'll do this. 
I want to make so you can actually see what's going on. Um, I'm going to turn my fan on high because I'm going to be using the heat gun now. Maybe not high, high. You won't be able to hear me. Okay. By the way, um, I set my Harbor Freight. Well, I didn't do it. My Harbor Freight heat gun caught on fire. Flames shooting out the end. Broke down and bought a good one. So my DeWalt and I are happy now. So I've got this on high. And I'm going to start to heat it up. Now you see it turn white. That's the chroma in action. If you don't adore what you've done, you can layer it with more paint. You can build up um, actually layers and layers of the colors by painting it and then putting some more chroma on it and paint and things like that. You can scratch through it. Um, you should experiment and play around with this stuff because it's really fun. I spent like two days just chroming everything that walked by. Cats look a little weird. So anyway, then this has to be sealed, of course, and protected. Um, but we'll get to that later. So on to the next fabulous project. So now we're going to do the traditional heat uh, treat coloring of metal with the torch. I found that if you use the little um, creme brulee, there's a word, I know what it is, don't tell me because I do know, <laughs> butane torch, um, you have a little more control because it's like a pinpoint flame and you can like write with the heat and stuff like that. But I'm going to use my big old fluffy torch here. Turn on your fan and get your torch lit. You want to kind of heat it and pull away, heat it and pull away um, so you can see how the color forms and know when to stop. So I can tilt this. See, it's starting to do the yellows now. Then it goes into like pinks and purples. You can do dots on bigger pieces or with a smaller torch. So there we've got, let me turn this off so I don't see. This has got a lot of the purple blues and a little bit of yellow in there. So I, if I don't like this, I just throw it in the pickle and start over again. Um, you can also let it cool and then reheat it with the torch to add different spots of color on it too. So um, it's really a pretty simple thing. There's actually online, there's a, somebody who does like the full paintings on big sheets of copper of scenes and things like that. So. It's just, you know, play around with it. It's another toy, another thing in your arsenal of uh, coloring metal. So we're going to go on to the next thing you can do with heat treating. So um, I'm just going to show you the heat treating, torch treating, coloring with uh, bronze and silver. So you can have a comparison. The other metals I was using were copper, which is one of the best for heat coloring. You can get the bronze will also color, I mean brass, excuse me. Yep, see we're getting color there. It's the rainbow! And pull up so you can check your color. I don't know if you can see any of this. That went black pretty quick, purpley black. I think you get much greater range with the copper. And we're going to try it with silver, and I pretty much know what's going to happen here, but this is jewelry making. It's always surprises. Most of your big colors with silver will be through um, liver sulfur. I don't like that pattern up there, but it's pretty much gray, and the white that's coming up is the fine silver in the metal. It's not a bad coating. It's what it is. It can be brass brushed off. So see the difference between that and, and our copper colors. You get a greater range with copper with the heat treating. So one other way to color metals, you don't have to have a torch. You can use a hot plate. Um, and this, once again, you can, well not once again, you can control the uh, color somewhat 
by only putting it on certain parts of the um, hot plate or you can place the whole thing on here and sh what this does and the heat gun that you can also use to, to color metal set on high by the way um, is it's slower than the torch because it heats up slower so you have more control over when to s so like see I'm starting to get color oh so I might want to move it over here so you have more control over the the colors so like I like that so I can pull that off now so it's still continuing to change color which I don't like oh, I lost it all ah so I can let this cool and then put it back on here uh, and recolor and try to get some of that those brighter colors. See where the tongs are? It's a little, the colors there still because of the, it's a heat sink. It drew some of the heat away. So with this, you probably want to leave it on for less time than I did. <laughs> but you can also use your heat gun with this. I don't think hair dryer would work because I think you need to be above 950 degrees. So we're going to continue to move on. Thank you. So if you let your uh, piece get um, go through all the color ranges it'll eventually come to a brownie gray uh, for the copper and you can treat this almost like liver of sulfur I've got a piece of uh, quadruple steel wool here and you can buff off highlights with it or leave it as is so it's another way of, of darkening your metal. This is more of a, a brown than the gray that you get with a liver of sulfur patina so that's that. Um, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned, but um, usually I let them air cool because sometimes when you quench in water, they you'll lose some of the bright colors that you have. So I would experiment with that also. What works for you and your torch, how hot you're heating, and all these variables, it's a, it's a crap shoot. So we're going to go on to the next. So um, now I'm going to do a little trick. Um, Candy flux, it's a paste flux. There's also a gel flux that you can use. I don't know what it's called. Maybe gel flux? Just saying. Anyway, what I've got is a little rubber stamp doodah here and a paintbrush with flux on it. And I'm going to paint it on to the rubber stamp. It's very exciting. It's actually pretty cool. And then I'm going to take it and I stand up for this because you want to just you don't want to move it so you want to get it in position drop it oh I moved it dang <laughs> I'll try it again because then we might have one that actually works and peel it up see it's a little smudged I'm going to do another one just to see if I can see how skilled I am at painting things and smashing them in the metal Okay, let's do it over here. Drop. Ah, a move. Push. And then you have to be careful about pulling up. That's a little better. Okay, so now, next step is we're going to go over to the torch and heat this sucker up. And it's like magic. See you over there. Mm -hmm. Remember when we stamped the flux on the metal? Well, the flux has dried a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it, the torch to it and you'll see what happens. Very exciting. Oh, damn. Like. So I'm doing the same thing I did with the coloring of the metal. I'm going to keep an eye on my colors and stop when I like what I've got. So you can heat at one end and make like, what are those called, consecutive swirling things. We're going to do polka dots, lines. Can't do a lot with this torch because it's such a big tip. But I'm kind of being outside the metal like that. And then pulling off so that I can see what happens. So I kind of like that color. So I'm going to stop. And I will hold up so you can see it better. Got some great violet up here and some good purple. Um, so I'm going to let this cool off. I'm might even take it off my charcoal so it stops coloring and plop that over there to cool and then I'll continue when it's cooled I'll show you what we do next okay so now this is cooled down obviously I'm holding it 
and I'm going to put it in water and I'm going to wipe off the flux. With my fingers. By the way, this uh, handy flex has fluorides in it, so you don't want to inhale it. So, see what you get is a pattern on your metal um, that's from the rubber stamp. Now, this technique is, is better for things like um, that are more basic patterns. Fine detail gets kind of smushed out, but it's pretty cool that you can put these patterns on your metal and play with them that way. So, anyway. That's that. Oh, the bell rang. It must be time for round two. So this technique, I don't, I don't know. I just started playing with it, so I thought I'd share it with you. Um, I, I, it looks like hell, but it was supposed to say hello. And this is uh, copper, and I used three and one oil to paint hello, all, um, and then put it in liver sulfur. So I'm thinking I'm going to try linseed oil and see how that works. You will get to witness it with me. Um, and I'm also thinking, why not paint it on a pattern and see if I can stamp with the oil. Because what, what made me think of this was uh, oil and water don't mix, right? So this is not going to wash off in the water. I mean in the liver of sulfur, which is a water-based. So this will probably eventually over time disintegrate this two-cent stamp, but... I don't think anyone's going to be crying. And then, oh, yes, mother. Thank you. I'm going to paint something on here. Uh, polka dots, they're always a go-to. Maybe some squiggles. Just to get an idea. I mean, you don't have a ton of fine control here. The sun is rising. So that's about as arty as I'm going to get on this because I don't want to waste time. And these you can clean with a uh, turp or hot soapy, I'm using Dawn and soapy water. So now, here's my liver. Hold your nose. And I'm gonna drop this in and hopefully it works somewhat. Like I said, this is, oh, I didn't stamp. Ah! Try that corner there. Kind of like we did with the flux on it. Oh, there's a pattern. Ah! see. All right, it worked. So that's my new invention. I don't know, somebody probably already invented it, but I would um, put this in uh, baking soda to, to stop the action, rinse it off, and then seal this too, or bury it. And you take the oil off with hot soapy water and a toothbrush. It's pretty cool. Linseed oil worked really well, much better than the three-in-one oil. I've got a lot more detail. Look, you can even see my stamp. So, that's for that part. Moving on. So, um, the last thing that we need to talk about is sealers. I get a lot of questions about this. None of them are permanent forever, forever, forever. Just know that. Um, if you're doing sealing a ring or bracelet against oxidation or sealing in a patina, um, it's always a good idea to get in your mind that you may have to reseal it someday. Just just saying. Unless it's protected like we talked about with a sunken or bezel or something. Um, there's a whole bunch of different kinds. The Golden makes a really good um, medium. They also have uh, gloss sealers and things like that. You can buy them in flat, matte, um, semi-gloss, and gloss. Um, and these are good for the painted surfaces. Then this is Everbright Protect Clear, which I just read it says it protects against acid rain. Ah! Which is always nice to have for your jewelry. Um, but this doesn't is not to be used with the painted surfaces, but you can put it directly on your clean metals. Uh, like when you liver sulfur or something, you can put this on. Or protecting your plain silver or brass or bronze to keep it from oxidizing. Um, Mod Podge is another choice. They all have varying rates of effectiveness. This is probably one of the stronger ones because it's anti-scratch, anti-corrosion resistant. And then um, I also use a resin spray uh, occasionally which leaves a better, smoother finish because it's a spray-on finish. 
um, and read the directions about what it works for. But, you know, honestly, just spray everything and check it out, see how it works. It's not going to be the end of the world. That's why I always do test pieces. And then uh, the other day I came up with an idea for another type of sealer. Um, I used liquid polymer clay, clear liquid polymer clay, and I put uh, three coats on this little sucker here for protecting the finish on this. Now know that every time you put a finish on that the color changes somewhat. I'm going to just use the um, Modgy Podgy on the ones we did today to give you an idea on the change. I probably should throw that part out. So this probably be better with a matte surface. Who knows, it might look really cool with a little shiny, but I'm just going to paint it up really fast. And I usually do two to three coats to really keep the finish. This dries clear, so we have to wait a while on that one. No, actually, you're gonna no, you're not gonna you're gonna wait a long time because I'm not gonna show you when it's done. Maybe it depends on my mood. So basically, that's that's it on sealers. Um, and like I said, you know they're not permanent, but. For now, they're fabulous. So we'll watch paint dry and get back to you. So that's the thin, the end of our coloring metal video. Um, some of you who follow me on Facebook might have gone, wait, I thought she was doing a newsletter on this. Well, I changed my mind. So I do a video instead. I hope you like it. Um, don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. and. Don't forget to comment. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you. And ciao.